Hi dear students, a warm good morning to all of you and welcome to one more session of immunology. Today we are going to talk about uh, the hematopoiesis of various cells of the immune system. We know that there are different cells which have been involved in the acquired immune system as well as the innate immune system. Now how are these cells formed and where are they being formed? That's what we are going to deal today with. Now the process of hematopoiesis is mainly referred to as the formation of RBC, WBC and the plasma of the blood. That is, the formation of the components of the blood is uh, the process called hematopoiesis. And all blood cells arise from a type of cell called the hematopoietic stem cell. Now, that is, all the blood cells are coming from a particular type of cell called the hematopoietic stem cell. Now, this hematopoietic stem cell is being found to be uh, characteristic in two ways. One, it has been found to be pluripotent and the second one, it is self-renewing. Now, what do you mean by pluripotent? Pluripotent means it is able to differentiate into various forms and thereby generate erythrocytes, granulocytes, monocytes, mast cells, lymphocytes and megakaryocytes and all that. So, one particular uh, cell itself is capable to form different lineages of cells. That is, it can either form the RBC, it can either form a type of WBC, okay, the granulocytes, or sometimes they can form the monocytes, lymphocytes, and all that. So, that is the case of pluripotency. Now, you can also find that this hematopoietic stem cell is also being considered to be as self-renewing. What do you mean by self-renewing? That is, they can undergo indefinite replication to form more stem cells. Now, if you consider a fertilized egg, okay, this cell uh, can form the embryo and the placenta. And further, they are being, uh, these are totipotent cells. And this cell can just form the, uh, now it will multiply and it will form the embryo. And you can find that within the embryo, uh, this is a blastocyst stage which containing the pluripotent cells and I mentioned to you what is a pluripotent cell. A pluripotent cell is a one which can undergo division into di form different types of cells. And so these pluripotent cells will divide into different types like hematopoietic stem cells will be there. Then you can have the neural cells or sometimes the mesenchymal stem cells. So there would be different types of stem cells which have been formed over here and they will form different different cell lineages. In the hematopoietic or the blood related stem cells, they will give result into the formation of RBC, WBC and all that. And that's, that's how the process of hematopoiesis happens. So the totipotent stem cells are those most versatile cell, stem cell type because they are formed shortly after the fertilization of an egg by a sperm cell and they can become all of the cells of the human body as well as the cells of the embryo and the developing fetus. And at about four days into the development, these totipotent stem cells will specialize slightly and become the pluripotent stem cells. So if you go to consider the totipotent cells, they can form, a, they can move on to any type of cells and the pluripotent cells will be considered to be as they will become specialized. Now, some will be, some cells will become, okay, specialized to form the blood related cells and some of them will be related to form the neural, neural tissue related cells and sometimes uh, some of them will be, uh, what, become uh, committed to become the mesenchymal stem cells. So, some type of uh, specialization will happen when they become pluripotent and they will become multipotent later on also. So, uh, the terms pluripotent and totipotent, that's what I just mentioned over here. So, the pluripotent stem cells will give rise to the all the cell types that form the human body but are not versatile as a totipotent cells. And if you go to consider... The embryonic stem cells are an example of the pluripotent uh, stem cells and uh, 
uh, as are a type of lab made stem cell is also called the induced pluripotent stem cell now later the multipotent stem cells which again are more limited in what they can become and the these cells will usually prefer to become a particular type of class or a category now for example hematopoietic stem cells are a type of uh, multipotent stem cells that prefer to become cells of the blood and the immune system and although it is impossible to induce them to become other cell types so you do remember that all the cells of the immune system are mainly been formed from the hematopoietic stem cells because most of the immune system related uh, cells are been found within the blood so the cells of the uh, which have been involved in the hemat uh, in the immune system is mainly been formed from the hematopoietic stem cells and in humans the site of hematopoiesis uh, is mainly been found to be in different sites now if you go to consider the first weeks of development it might be found in the embryonic yolk sac and the third month of gestation uh, the embryonic stem cells will migrate towards to the liver or in the fetal liver and then to the spleen so there also we will have some type of hematopoiesis and later on we can see that the bone marrow becomes the major factor in hematopoiesis and by birth what would happen there will be still or uh, there would be little or no hematopoiesis in the liver and in the spleen so at three stages the hematopoiesis will happen or the regions where the blood formation will be happening uh, either in the embryonic yolk sac in the first weeks of development and after 3 months the embryonic stem cells will move towards the fetal liver and then to the spleen where the hematopoiesis will take place and after that what the won't be a much hematopoiesis in the liver and the spleen and it will be carried out mainly in the bone marrow now the hematopoietic stem cells uh, as i told you they can form different lineages okay and uh, either they can become into they may they are mainly contributed to the, they are mainly committed to form the what the blood related cells so in the blood related cells itself they can form two different progenitor cells either the myeloid progenitor cell and the lymphoid progenitor cell and from the lymphoid progenitor cell itself different lineages will be formed the progenitor cell will lose its capacity for self renewal and are committed to a particular cell lineage and you can see that the progenitor commitment uh, it depends upon the acquisition of responsiveness to particular growth factors and cytokines so when this hematopoietic uh, stem cell is self replicating it will divide into two different types of progenitor cells depending upon the what the nutrients and the growth factors as well as the cytokines which are there in the environment they will divide into two different types of progenitors called the myeloid progenitor and the lymphoid progenitor and each type of progenitor cell uh, then will not have the self renewing ability and they will become committed to become different type of lineages and each lineage will divide and form different types of cells the lymphoid progenitor cell will either form the nk cell then sometimes it will form a t cell progenitor which will divide and form the t helper cells and the t cytotoxic cells we can also have the b cell progenitor which will again divide to form which will be committed to form the b cell and the lymphoid progenitor can also give rise to the dendritic cell so from the hematopoietic cell they will renew and form the progenitor cell lymphoid progenitor and from each lymphoid progenitor cell a uh, different type of uh, cells which have been involved in the immune system will be formed now in the same site we have uh, the myeloid progenitor the myeloid progenitor can either give rise to the, to the dendritic cells or they can give into the different types like the monocytes neutrophils eosinophils basophils platelets rbc macrophages like that different cells are being formed from the what hematopoietic stem cells 
and in the bone marrow the hematopoietic stem cells grow and mature on a meshwork of uh, stromal cells uh, which have been found to be non hematopoietic cells which will support the growth and the differentiation of these hematopoietic cells so surrounding uh, that is these hematopoietic stem cells is also been surrounded by a meshwork of other cells called the stromal cells and they play an important role in the growth and the differentiation of the hematopoietic stem cells the stromal cells can either include uh, fat cells endothelial cells fibroblast as well as the macrophages and they mainly provide uh, hematopoietic inducing micro environment so that the hematopoietic stem cells will be able to grow and differentiate into different types of cells and as i mentioned earlier uh, certain cytokines are also be needed we just have to know that uh, what are these things uh, you can see colony stimulating factors could be present or sometimes uh, proteins called the cytokine proteins like the erythropoietin o is also been formed erythropoietin o is mainly been produced by the kidney and this cytokine includes the terminal development of the erythrocytes and regulates the production of uh, rbc so the, with this we come to an end of the hematopoiesis Uh, do remember that all the uh, hematopoietic or the immune system related cells comes from the hematopoietic stem cells and they require the uh, uh, a good environment for the formation of uh, immunological cells and that has been been provided by the stromal cells as well as by the presence of certain cytokines with this we come to an end of the session thank you